Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation, man. It's It's been some time, and I, those of you that follow me, I know it's been a couple months, man. I've had a lot of moving parts. I'm in a couple different programs. I'm back in school t- trying to take care of a master's, trying to get my life rolling again. Uh, I got some family stuff that I was dealing with, a lot of different stuff. Uh, now things are kind of starting to s- smooth out and sort itself out. So I took some time today to kind of come in here and make a video. There's been a lot of stuff that's been happening uh, within the markets, and I'm sure those of you that are following this channel, know all about it obviously we have some huge stuff coming with the uh you know the henman documents being released june 13th we'll have a conversation about that and then you know obviously chairman against the sec have been cracking down hard harder on the crypto space and now everyone's really starting to see the corruption and just the the silly behavior behind you know, corrupt regulators like Chairman Gensler and and uh, and the rest. Uh, if we come over here, look at this. We're sitting at a 1.08 billion or trillion dollar market cap. Uh, if we come over here, it's crazy to see how we just massively just dumped and there was a lot of people in, in twitter and uh in the community that were kind of freaking out like oh man what happened and there's like like we were just talking about just a second ago there's a lot of moving parts in regards of you know uh chairman Gensler going after you know binance coinbase and now you have uh the likes of robin hood delisting ada and other uh digital assets and speaking of ada we're going to talk about charles hawkinson uh in this video as well but uh just a lot of stuff to try to shake out the markets i was listening to uh blockchain backer a little bit on his technical analysis and he's big on like staying focused within the charts and seeing that at pivotal points within you know market structure within the charts that uh you know there's bound to be some sort of uh event or news that comes out that actually uh, pretty much permits or allows the charts to follow the structures type stuff obviously there's black swans and you know other things that can happen but he's pretty much saying like typically we were bound to have you know kind of what's happening so uh, if we come down here obviously we're big xrp uh, advocates on this channel uh you can see that it did bounce i think it bounced down as low as like 48 cents or something it was yesterday i think it was at like 53 54 or yeah 53 54 now it's it's bounced back up but um yeah, the whole market's kind of seen a little bit of red. We were down close to 10% in XRP in general. Uh, but moving on, we're looking over here at the uh, Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index. We're sitting at a 49. And I want to say before I go on, you know I do this in one take, so I may be a little rusty. It's been a while. I'm going to try to be a little bit more uh, consistent in regards of trying to find more time to, to post stuff now that things are kind of kind of figuring itself out. Uh, but we're going to start here with John Deaton. It says, uh, Crypto isn't dead. I will say this again. This is all about crushing the market and then watch JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and the like will get a bigger slice, meaning a bigger slice of the crypto market and then give Gensler a call and then there will be some sort of framework worked out. So we've been talking about that a lot on this channel, talking about how when it comes to like custodying, that, that being a major word, uh, you know, they want to have the incumbents in Wall Street and the people that have been, you know, established in existence, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan's, they want to be the ones that, hey, you can trust us. We've been around. You can custody your assets here. And, you know, they want to be the platforms and the places to go to be a part of this uh, environment. And the crazy thing about that is there's so many um, negatives that can go with that in regards of, you know, there's true uh and and genuine companies out there and you know meaning crypto and blockchain companies that are trying to you know have a foot in in this space and you know be able to compete and and and, uh offer services to people but then you have you know people like chairman gensler and the and the incumbents trying to stifle that uh and 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 have control of it which is, is just shameful and then the whole part of crypto isn't dead obviously we just seen you know a lot of red, especially after seeing some green, and there's so much you know negativity going around in regards of Chairman Gensler trying to take over the space, and he made it quite evident. I wish I had put it in this video, but he had an interview where he said we already have digital currency, and he was talking about the. Uh uh, you know, obviously the dollar us dollar is digital, you know, you have credit cards and all that stuff pretty much showing his hand like no, this is this is what they value. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to pretty much stifle everything, get rid of everything else. And, you know, hey, put on their own narrative and, and agenda. But, you know, just like uh, the XRP community has been, you know, saying, screaming from the uh, the rooftops for over two and a half years now. Well, yeah, a little over two years. Uh, that man, like this is this is a, a major problem. You know, this is it's not just about Ripple and XRP and the XRP community. It's about everything else, and we're gonna tie more in that uh, into uh, some of these uh, tweets we're gonna get into. I wanted to play this. This is from uh, Riz XRP. It's a great video. It says bullish uh, Craig Dewitt. Listen to this. Here's my hot take. Hit me. SEC gets their ass kicked in the Ripple case. Absolutely get their ass kicked in the Ripple case. But the ruling comes out in such a way 
that XRP is alone cleared as a non-security in the United States. Meaning that with all the other stuff that the SEC is pulling, suing exchanges, suing other coins, are going to sue some big ones as well, that only BTC and XRP have legal clarity in the United States for a two-year period. Just taking some show notes on that one. Ooh, that would be spike. like the okay. turnaround of a century, right? Go from like wow. getting beat up by the government to being the only one with clarity because you spent I spent two hundred fifty or two hundred million dollars fighting this case. Is I that how much Ripple spent? Yeah, it's a public number, but yeah, like two hundred. So it really put that into perspective. And a lot of people, with, I, I can't say a lot, but there's been people in the community and the likes of you know uh, DAI talking about how you know, hey. The, XRP could be the one not to say it's a guaranteed thing, not to say it's going to flip, you know, uh, Ethereum or, or Bitcoin. Hey, it could happen. But they talk about being the one meaning like, what if that is the real thing? What do you think, you know, uh, uh, money in the market is going to do? It's going to literally funnel into XRP, which isn't going to increase market cap value price. Boom. And, and that could be a, a, a perfect storm, especially if it if it what we talk about in the community, if it really is, I guess you could say positioned to take on that role. We'll just leave it at that. I think it's quite interesting. And then it leads me into what XRP Crypto Wolf is talking about here. What do you think is going to happen to XRP when the Hemen documents are released on June 13th? And he put the eyes and quite honestly, uh, some people are saying like nothing, uh, it's extremely hard to tell. I mean, it could be anything, especially with what we've experienced in the, in the crypto market in general, but X, as XRP in our uh, Ripple community, you know, uh, who knows? I mean, there could be some sort of spin, some sort of narrative that's thrown out as the the uh, documents come out that, you know, create some sort of manipulation that, you know, permits and, and promotes, uh, uh, you know, a major sell off. I mean, who knows what can happen? I mean, it can spike up and, you know, get people to, you know, buy in more. And then, you know, I mean, who knows? I know for myself in particular, and a lot of people within the XRP community, we follow, you know, the likes of John Deaton, Jeremy Hogan, and uh, Fred Raspoli, and, you know, people that are more understanding and more educated on the law uh, aspect of it. We follow them, so we, we tend to turn our eyes and our attention toward them to kind of see how they break things down and see what the significant is, despite whatever happens within the markets. And I found, you know, in my time since, you know, uh, late 2017 in this space, that is the way to go, is, is try to... You know, stick to your your investing strategy, trading strategy, whatever you got, and 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 follow, uh, you know, multiple multiple minds, various minds that you know you have some sort of trust in, in a sense, uh, and you know, take in the information, uh, that information, and evaluate, and you know, have roll out your own plan and and stick to kind of what you believe in. That's kind of what I think is the the path to success on top of your DCA and, and getting in solid projects and stuff. Uh, coming over here, so this is this is one of the big topics of this video is Charles Hawkinson's Hawken, uh, changing his tunes. XRP community peace. <laughs> so a lot of people, a lot of different people feel you know different about this. So there's a, a the crypto base guy put out something. It says um, Hawkinson's extending an olive branch. I think we can take, but I only speak for myself. Cardano Final wants to make peace with the community. So was uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Weezy X from Nerd Nation uh, Unbox was had uh, retweeted this. So I wanted to talk about this real quick. So remember, uh, there was a uh, I don't know if it was a live, but there was a video of him pretty much saying like, there's there's no there's no grand conspiracy or whatever. But it's like if we've we've showed. You know, within the community, we've spread information of, you know, documents and video footage of themselves and audio clips of, you know, the people that are involved in this ETH gate scandal. And it's 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 ex exposed representatives within our government that are supposed to be there for the people. Right. What do you mean? There's no grand conspiracy. Right. You were pretty much discon, you know, uh devaluing and in in a sense uh, degrading the XRP community for being some grand conspiracy. But now now that, you know, um, chairman gets from the SSC are coming after Cardano or ADA and, you know, you have uh, delisting from Robinhood, all this stuff's happening. Like he's 
Now it's 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 in hit the ball's in his court and now he needs help. So now me personally, the person I am, I'm like cool, whatever. You know, Coinbase did it too, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But Coinbase did the same thing. Like, you know, they kind of just turned a blind eye. You know, quickly delisted XRP, and when it came to like, hey, you know, the community reaching out, like, hey, help. You know, let's let's band together, come together as exchanges, and, and fight the good fight. But no, you know, they cowered in their own when it came to their Lynn product, and you know, they cowered all the way up until the point. Now they want to all of a sudden fight, and now they need the support from the community. Personally, the way I feel, doesn't matter. You know, we're not going to forget the past. You know, uh, we can forgive. We're not going to forget. Obviously, we're aware of what's happening, but we come together and fight the good fight because it doesn't matter how we feel. The point is, is there are people out to get us to stifle and and, and stifle innovation, to hinder and hurt our uh, financial freedom that, you know, we're all hoping to, uh, you know, obtain and our involvement in the space is, is, is being... Uh, manipulated and they're trying to pretty much not allow you know us everyday investors to even be in this space so I, I can care less let's all bend together put all the money put all the resources all the energy all the effort together to fight the good fight against uh you know these terrible people in in, in my opinion uh coming over here <laughs> eleanor terrett sweets this it says new cardano founder charles hawkinson tells fox business in response to robin hood delist and ada soul and matic Quote, it's not surprising that when there is a lack of clarity, contradictory guidance, and a culture of fear instead of collaboration with regulators, that some entities will choose to simply start leaving markets entirely. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And uh, Mr. Huber here, formerly known as Stefan Huber, says, always remember that all of this is because SC is just a bit clumsy. They've never, uh, there never was a conspiracy, and there still is no conspiracy. Man. <laughs> And obviously he's, you know, he's kind of putting some jabs at, at Charles there. Coming over here, um, Fred Raspoli's uh, responding to Coinbase's United We Stand, or he said, or United We uh, hashtag stand with crypto shields up, right? And this is from uh, Coinbase. And then Fred Raspoli says, United We hashtag realist XRP self-serving hypocrite shields down. So pretty much throwing jabs. And this is what I was just talking about. It's like when it was, when it was time to do the right thing and, you know, give people, you know, that had custody their XRP on your platform when it would came to a screenshot, I think it was in 2020, December, 2020. Can't remember uh, the exact date, but we were supposed to get the songbird and the flare tokens. It's like, you know, where was all that? And then not even you just quickly delisted XRP when it happened. Obviously, you were uh, they were planning an IPO and stuff. OK, that makes sense. But now that you have other digital assets that were, quote unquote, um, what did uh, how does he say it? Um, Chairman Gensler pretty much thinks we'll just say that that's how stupid it is. He personally thinks that, you know, these certain digital assets are securities and they've been named in certain lawsuits. But no, uh, Coinbase doesn't delist those like they did XRP. Rather, they're fighting now. So the way I feel, like I said earlier, cool. Fight the good fight now. We're not going to forget. We'll forgive. Can't forget, right? But we're going to stand together and fight. Uh, um, John Deaton had, uh, and I'll, I should have put it up here, but John Deaton in Crypto Law US had put up a, uh, a, a Google Doc to where you can join and, and, and uh, see if we can be, uh, I think it's Amicus within the uh, Coinbase deal. And I ended up signing up for that as well. Uh, and obviously I was, you know, one of the huge advocates of the class action lawsuit against, uh, uh, the sec for their wrongdoings in the ripple lawsuit, but continuing on here, this is, this is, there's two more videos in here that are pretty sickening. I think it's this one and the next one. Uh, but this is interesting and I'm going to play this and I want you to, uh, tell me who said this before. Crypto is the most important technology we have to update the financial system globally. If you try to send money overseas today, you can often get in a plane and arrive before the money actually gets there. Money is now just bits of data. There's no reason why it needs to take that long or to be that expensive. Crypto technology can make every payment in our economy as fast, cheap, and global as sending an email. That's All right, so for those of you who haven't seen the video, obviously Brad Garlinghouse has said that before in, in a video footage he had or, uh, on a, um, an interview that he had. And it's just it, it ties into the frustration people have with Brian Arm or uh, yeah um, Brian Armstrong and the uh, and Coinbase and their actions and how they did things with XRP and you know the Songbird and Flare and just all that all that just weird shady stuff. And it's like now you're saying things and now you're acting a certain way, but like when it when it was really necessary, when it wasn't you being under the microscope in a sense, you know you you weren't there at all. You know what I'm saying? You weren't doing the right thing. 
But now it's like, okay, the, the tides have turned and now you're using, you know, other people's words, which is, it's universal. It's true what crypto can do. Obviously, XRP being a big one. Uh, but it's like, bro, you're, th this is why people are frustrated. Uh, and then this, this is crazy right here. So this is our former uh, chairman, uh, Jay Clayton here. Listen to what, what he says here. Jay, how do you see it? Do you agree with Secretary Gensler's moves? <clears throat> if you were SEC chair... Would you have taken these moves? Look, it's his, it, it's his leadership now. He's been in this position for over, over two years. Um, where they've gone with this, you know, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to be the person who throws bombs or second guesses from the sidelines. Um, I, I, am, I am a supporter of the agency. I'm a supporter of the law the way it is. Um, I think that when I was there, people would say I was a crypto hawk. I, when I, we effectively shut down the ICO craze, mm -hmm. said that most of what I'm seeing is securities activity. Um, but I do think we are having very blunt conversations about something that requires nuance. Crypt crypto is really a technology. The, the use of blockchain technology in all sorts of aspects of our financial system should be not controversial. If you have an asset, pick a, a CMBS security, so if, if you were SEC chairman, well, you were, and you, you, you did what you did. You dropped the lawsuit as you're walking out of the door. <laughs> it's crazy how like they just literally just lobbed that one up for him. And then him and his response in regards of like, oh yeah, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, Monday quarterback or whatever, like Monday morning quarterback it. It's like, okay, cool. You know, cool answer. But it's like, bro, you were there and we know what you did. It was very significant what you did. And obviously now you have almost an entire community realizing it now, how the severity of the Ribble versus SC case. And that's something that you started with you. Probably started a little bit before that, but it started with you. We have the timeline. We have the, the information. We have the facts. It's it's sickening. Oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm... No, you should have been like, yeah, I was there. I'm, you know, I did this. I messed up. Da, da, da. But no, nope. it's crazy. So uh, this is what it's all about. I don't know if I'm going to play the whole thing. Uh, but obviously, if you're part of this community, you know all about uh, crypto law, U.S. Uh, from John Deaton and the whole ETH gay stuff. Obviously, we have the uh, emos coming out June 13th. It should be quite interesting to see kind of how things unfold. I think the 14th, uh, John Deaton and, and, you know, some solid uh, law personnel are going to come together on a panel and, 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 you know, really dive into kind of what's, what's within those documents. So there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff happening in the next few days. And I know the anticipation is killing a lot of people. It's been a long time. I think it was like over a year plus we've been trying to get this, these documents and this information, <sighs> man, it's good to be back. Like I told you, man, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening. I'm trying to do my best here. This is what I enjoy doing. I love making these videos, so I'm glad I'm able to make these videos. I'm, I'm excited to make more videos and grow this community. Like always, stay strong out there and be safe.